So we're here, Holly's Business Pharmacy. We're talking today about, I'm going to have to start this again, fight or flight um, and that mode and then going into flourish and fly. That is what we're doing with Daniel. I'm so glad you're all joining me. Thank you very much for bearing with me. Um, Daniel's now going to have to do a bit of therapy on me because... Um, that was just rather stressful, I have to say. Um, but we're going to head over to him. His handle, by the way, for everybody who is watching, is Headologist, which I think is such a cool handle. We were at, well, we were talking about the pandemic and really... Hi. Hello. So <laughs> I just experienced deep stress just then. Yep. Yeah, just deep, 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 deep stress. So I just... Yeah, you just can I get you to do something for yeah, me? Yeah, please. Close your eyes. Yeah. And I want you to breathe in very slowly for the count of four. Hold it for the count of four. Breathe out slowly for the count of four. Hold it for the count of four. Breathe in for four. Hold for four. Breathe out for four. Hold for four. Take a really deep, deep, deep breath in. And then just let it all out. There we I'm go. Back. How do you feel? Totally better. Thank you. You're it's welcome. So much better. That's box breathing, isn't it? That's box breathing, yes. Genius. Repeat that as many times as is necessary in order for you to just go ah, in the I, face of a stressful I, event. I am back in the face of internet issues. So you said that we're not designed to be in that mode for that many years and then go back to normality. And I, I left you there. That's as far as we got, yes. I was just about to talk about fight, flight, or freeze. Um, stress is a whole different ball game of other things that's on top of it that includes fight, flight, or, or freeze. It's our response, not to crisis, although it is, it's actually our response to danger. And really it's our response to life-threatening danger. So go back to when we were living in tribes of hunter-gatherer societies. Life was dangerous. You could be out hunting berries or gazelle. And next thing you know, there's a saber-toothed tiger or a cannibal or your quicksand. And your body just gears you up to either fight for your life, flee for your life, or freeze to the spot. Because in the face of that particular threat, that might be your best survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. And it's only meant to trigger in brief isolated moments because it's very, very stressful. It triggers the release of hormones like cortisol, like adrenaline, which are very taxing to the body. And that's what pumps you. That's what makes you run for your life. That's what roots you to the spot. And as soon as the danger is over, you're meant to clear it all out and relax. But we don't in the modern world. Mm. That's the problem with it. And that's the problem that we had in that period of time, which is that we were holding on, holding on. We were adapting, we were changing, and then we were back to normal. And then it's like, get back to normal, get, do it, forget it, move forward. And it's been very, very difficult. And especially put business and our livelihoods yeah. and what we're yeah. earning and how we're paying our rent or our mortgages. So, this fight, flight and freeze, um, what can we do when we need to move out of those situations? And, you know, there is also a, a sense, isn't it, that you said there's good stress. You know, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I don't live off it, but I, I really thrive off it. I love a challenge. I love building. I've learned to become healthy with it, whereas maybe yeah. in my 30s I wasn't. I spent a decade yeah. just in it and it made me behave differently. Yeah. Now I think I've got a sort of more of a balance, but tell me what we can do to get out of it. And do we have to get out of it? Yes, we do. Um, there, essentially, there are two sides to our nervous system. There's the sympathetic, that is fight, flight, freeze, and there's the parasympathetic. We call it rest or digest, or if you're being a bit particularly naughty, call it feed and breed. So, 
sympathetic, fight or flight, that is your stress response. It's your danger response. It's meant to be triggered to short-term immediate threats. We're meant to spend most of the day in the other side, the parasympathetic, the rest and digest. It's healing and it's harmonizing and it's rebalancing and it clears out the toxins like adrenaline and cortisol because you don't want them hanging around in your system for too long, they damage it. Back when we were hunter-gatherers, we spent most of the day chilling out in that rest or digest mode, quick danger, quick burst of fight or flight, danger is yeah. over, back to rest and digest. Well, unfortunately, modern life is nothing like that. It's nothing but stress from the minute you get up to the minute you go to bed. Traffic jams will trigger that response. Interpersonal yeah. difficulties will trigger. Internet going down will trigger that response. It's the same response, but it's not a life-threatening danger, but it means that throughout the day, we are predominantly in that fight or flight mode and not spending enough time in rest and digest. So absolutely anything you can do to rest yourself yeah. is going to help. Now that could be just, if you're in a stressful situation, it might be to remove yourself from it, go for a really long walk in a nice piece of countryside or the nearest available park, and just sit and relax. If you haven't got that, if it's urban, just go and sit by a fountain and just breathe and lose yourself in it for a while. Rest and then go back into it. Mm. Um, it could be that box breathing exercise that we went through or just taking, stepping outside and taking 10 deep breaths and letting those out. Um, mm. Meditation on a daily basis is helping you to go into that um, rest and digest mode. Self-hypnosis, which I teach to a lot of my patients, is another way of going into that rest and digest mode. And if it's become chronic, if it feels like something that you cannot snap out of it, or you can't even relax enough to take a breather, breathe deeply, yeah. or meditate, that's when um, you step in with things like cognitive behavior therapy and REBT, because you're going to need a systematic toolkit to bring you back down to baseline so that you can breathe relax and bring in more of that and it's the problem is that life in general even before the pandemic was too stressful we were spending too much time in fight or flight mode anyway then we went into this really stressful period then we've come out of it but we're still in fight or flight and as i said we're physically emotionally psychologically exhausted anything you can do to rest will help and and so what we're saying here is almost so, you know, if I'm watching this now and I've got a business, I'm excited about my business. It's the year it's going to happen for me. Um, but actually, um, and I've been very honest, with my, uh, you know, with everyone that um, with this flock of people is that this year I'm concentrating on my mental health and yeah. actually trying to understand the tools that I'm not I haven't been equipped with um, in order to help me flourish because I've yeah. got some big dreams but I sort of I, I need nothing to damage them I need nothing to hold me back would yeah. you say that actually we can't change the internet going down we can't change social media we can't change the traffic jams so the only thing we can change is being acutely aware yes. that actually traffic jams are triggering some you know can trigger. historic um fight and flight mode which now we slightly think is just daily life taking the school run right we just actually just get over it should we just be really recognizing well what time we're living in and that actually it's not an option to yes. to it's not an option to deal with your mental health it, it's a, an imperative absolutely imperative we learned that i mean the pandemic forced mental health and well-being to the top of everybody's agenda. Um, to the point now that um, when people go for interviews with companies, they ask about that company's well-being policy. And if they don't think they've got one or it's not robust enough, they're turning the job down because well-being has become yeah. obviously, clearly the most important thing to you. Now, obviously, if you're running your own small business, yeah. then it's up to you to implement your own well-being policy because you can't go to your boss and say, what is your well-being policy? You're the boss. The problem with small business owners is you just get into the trap of thinking that you, you can't stop. You have to work all the, 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 the live long day and um, you can't really delegate. Um, and if you don't keep a hand on the till, everything will fall apart. So I have to help people learn, especially when it's small business, learn just to let go, 
to step mm -hmm. back and just trust that mm -hmm. it's going to be okay, that you can take a few weeks off, that you can go home on time. The same problems are still gonna be there tomorrow, next week, whenever, only you will be in a better frame of mind to deal with them. When it comes to things like traffic jams, um, we have to learn techniques. Now, you know, if you heard on the radio that a, a, a tiger had just escaped from the zoo and it hadn't been fed and it was very hungry and you're walking down the road and that tiger leaps out in front of you, fight or flight is the, oh, we'll freeze actually with this tiger because that's your best response. But that is the only logical way to deal with that situation. Don't think, react. Run for your life, fight for your life. Root to the spot, it's survival. A traffic jam is not survival. An internet connection going wrong is not survival. So you have to learn techniques to not trigger the fight or flight response right. to something yeah. that's not actually life threatening. Yeah, that's, that's the way to keep calm. I'm going to read out some comments. Um, uh, Marianne Gold Creations, uh, Marnie Gold Creations. Hi Holly, I'm stressed but hopefully, um, but hopeful. I've been dealing with having long COVID, which has meant I had to stop everything. However, I'm learning and figuring out how pacing will help me get back to me. Uh, Joe jo Etherington, loving this. Popsy Clunk, my dog uh, lowers my stress levels instantly. Uh, social Pip, my morning dog walk sets me up for the day. Dogs are magical. Calm yeah. lettering, I don't have a dog anymore, but creating personalised paw print orders every day makes my happy, uh, my heart happy. And Crystal Crafted UK, oh, I'm loving box breathing. Um, everyone, write in how you're dealing with this fight and flight or flourish and fly. What is stopping you getting into that mode? And maybe Daniel can actually help you understand where you're at. So Daniel, tell me, if you um, then look at sort of what we've been talking about, that actually our mental health is, it's, a, it's an imperative tool that we all have to have as business owners. You know, this is, this is you know, the energy that we would wait, waste on our fight and flight that is not required, but could be spent in positive things in our business um, and how to prolong ourselves ultimately, isn't it? It's how to prolong yeah. feeling rested and in a good environment in our, in our brain and creativity and problem solving. And we've learned on these, um, uh, on our pharmacies that, you know, the second you're in fight and flight, you basically can't problem solve. You can't be creative because you're, you're using the, I'm terrible at this, front co cortex? Yes, basically, in, in layman's terms, what actually happens is that your higher brain functions get shut down. Yes. You, your, your reptilian brain kicks in, basically, the, 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 the older part of you. Because if you think about it, if you're in danger, you need to become a creature of reaction. Yes. Because that gives you an extra few seconds. That might not sound like a lot, but those extra few seconds are the difference between life and death. If your brain's still functioning at the higher levels, you are questioning what you're doing. Right. Which is slow down. So if you think about, well, hang on a minute, by the time you thought, hang on a minute, that tiger's eaten you. Yes. So you can just, you know, and, and when you see, look, watch, next time you watch an animal documentary, look at predator prey. They're not thinking, they just, they do it, they're gobbed. Normally, you know, with a bunny rabbit, you know, it, or the hare, it'll see the fox and it's gone and it will leave an arc of poo and pee behind it because it's just reacting. It's evacuating its bladder and its bowels and it's out of there before it's even consciously thought about it because wow. everything is shaving seconds off. Lightening the load, not thinking, and you're gone. Then you can stop. Then you can think, am I out of danger? Yeah. And Translate that is not what we have every day, everyone. I hope none of you do, right? So when we are getting ourselves into that state, we've got to remember the hair. We are not the hair. We are not mm. being chased. So then tell me, you, you, you spoke about um, our REBT or CBT. So, yeah. you know, so now I'm thinking, right, I need to practice mental health, um, uh, help my mental health every day, my breathing, my meditating, my yoga, um, taking a walk in any green space, being with nature, or patting my dog, that's that. But then tell me the next bit is if I can't yeah. still get out of 
that headspace I'm in, it yeah. would go into a space where potentially you put your hand up to say, I need help, I need therapy, yeah. I need someone to help me with this. And this is where you're saying REBT or CBT is a useful tool. Tell me about this. So um, REBT is a very distinct philosophy on life and its philosophy is that it's not the events in life that disturb you, it's what you are telling yourself about those events that does the disturbing. So if you are stuck, if you are stressed, if you are unable to snap out of that mode, it's not the thing, it's what you're telling yourself about it. Right. And the idea is if you change your unconscious interpretation, you will naturally change how you think, how you feel, how you act. Now, we're not saying that when stuff happens, it doesn't have an influence because it does. Life can be stressful and challenging and just really horrible at times. Yeah. But even in the face of the stressful, even in the face of the challenging, even in the face of the really horrible, you can still remain in control or regain that sense of control if you think you've lost it by looking at what it is that you're telling yourself. Change the message, change the outcome. In essence, this means that, that nothing and no one can make you anxious. Nothing and no one can make you angry. Nothing and no one can make you depressed. Nothing and no one can drive you to drink or to drugs or to distraction and procrastination. It's your unconscious interpretation. Change that, get back the control. Oh, uh, easier said than done? So much easier said than done. If that was it, <laughs> I'd be on stage charging a <laughs> fortune. Um, it's Why is it hard? Why? because we're so used to uh, thinking a certain way or we're so used to behaving a certain way. I mean, I would go as far as say, I was talking to a uh, slightly off topic, but I was talking to somebody about if I could build the education system again, you know, I, if I could build the education system, I, I would have these classrooms where one, you'd go in and you'd learn about the planet and yeah. the fact we are a planet and we're part yeah. of the system. And, I then go into another class and I'd learn about, um, you know, our ancestry and our humans and, 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 and where we live and our place. I'd learn another classroom about the soil and our, our mm -hmm. life force and our animals and our, and in another one, I'd learn about our brain and I'd yes. learn about how to be just me, <laughs> how yeah. to be human, how to digest so, what's yes. going to happen. And yet we learn about, Aztecs and and you know religion or we learn about calc you know math right angles and things like that all before we learn about these things so yeah. but but tell me why is it is tell me why we think like we do um partly is biology so um REBT makes a big deal of, about what it calls unhealthy beliefs yeah uh, um, so let, let's say, um, let's say that, uh, let's take it away from work for a minute, actually, because everyone's just going to go crazy because we'll focus on work. Let's say I've got a date I, um, on, on Saturday. Let's say I've been single for a while and the date is really important to me and I'm pinning all my hopes on it. And unconsciously, I'm telling myself, right, this date absolutely has to go well. It just has to. It's going to be a complete nightmare if it doesn't. It's going to be unbearable to me if it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it's all my fault. I'm a loser. How am I going to feel about that day? Yeah. Stressed? Yeah, stressed. Anxious? Really stressed, yeah. What am well, I going it, to be? It has to be one way. It has to work. Yeah. Has to. That's it. Has There's to. No, no other options. So how am I going to come, come across on that day if I'm that entrenched, that rigid about it, and that stressed about it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be myself. I'm not going to... I'm not going to be light or... Yeah, I'm not going to be me, probably. I'm exactly. Going to be, yes, I'm going to be forcing a situation potentially. So, what happens to that date? That person thinks I'm pretty stressed or quite intense, or yeah, um, yeah I'm. I, they don't see the c color in me, would they? They would see exactly. my stress self. Yeah. More importantly, I have created the very situation I've told myself yes. must not and would be awful, would be unbearable, means I'm a loser. Yes. Let's, let's say I've got exactly the same date. I've been single for exactly the same amount of time. So it is just as important to me. But this time my brain unconsciously is going, 
yes, of course I want the date to go well. I know it doesn't have to go well, but I'd like it to. I won't like it if it doesn't, but it is not the end of the world. I might find it difficult. I get through it. People do. Doesn't mean I'm a loser. I'm perfectly fine as I am. It's just a date that didn't work out. If I tell myself that, how mm -hmm. am I going to feel? Uh, empowered to be myself. Empowered to be myself. Hopefully I will be nervous. Hopefully I'll be yeah. excited, which is stressed, but in a good way. Yes, yes. But I'll be more authentic. I will be my, myself. So how is that date more likely to go if I'm nervously excited, but more myself? Probably I'm going to make the person feel at ease and see me. And probably we would laugh a lot more than in the other situation. Yes. Now apply that to work. I can think one way that makes yeah. me stressed and anxious and inauthentic and all of it and ruin everything. Or I can make myself nervously excited, stressed in a good way, but also calm, authentic yes. and empowered. So REBT makes a big deal of all those unhealthy beliefs. We look for them because we want to help you to not think like that and give you tools and techniques that drag you all the way to the healthier side. Yes. And yeah. the the fundamental issue is um, the, 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 the most unhealthy of the unhealthy beliefs was you going, it must go well, it just must. There was your rigidity. There was the, no other option was allowed. The alternative was what we call a flexible preference. Yes, I would like it to go well, but I accept it doesn't have to. There's your wiggle room. Mm. Now we all have preferences. They define us. As you said, how do I know who am I? By my preferences. You know, I like Indian food, or I like Chinese food, I like sunny beach holidays, I like skiing holidays, I like being here, I like doing this, I like being at this point in my life. The preferences define us. As long as we stick to our preferences, we are rational, we are reasonable, we are calm, we are empowered. Unfortunately, it's just biology. The more important the preference, the more likely it is we're gonna turn it into a demand and then become stressed, exhausted, inauthentic, unproductive, all of it. So it's just because that thing is important to you, you're running the risk of turning it into something that's so rigid, you're pushing it further away, not bringing it to you. Mm. And but it's so interesting you say that. And then the outcome you were so scared about, you end up forcing it to happen. Yes. You, you, you basically drive it to being the conclusion. I've got lots of people talking here. Can I just read some things out? Yes. Jalil, designer maker. I have found that weekly yoga and a morning yep. walk to music has really helped my mental health. Yeah. Crystal Crafted UK. I definitely feel the pressure of taking adequate rest, but I am unlearning this. Uh, at taking, I definitely feel the pressure of taking adequate rest but i'm unlearning this as i know my creative flows when my cup is full my heart is happy and my health is made a priority uh gemma carter art the only time i really switch off is when i'm painting my breathing mm. naturally slows and my mind stops racing but i just struggle to sit down to paint at the moment having just moved house again another hugely stressful moment in our lives oh. the thoughtful potter i've established a daily routine where i start the day with some form of exercise and it has really helped me my anxiety i do a mix oh. of yoga kettlebells and meditation excellent sounds great anna um sheer burn stamps my work relaxes me i need it to keep myself calm and in balance that's hopefully what, what this whole point is, that we're doing what we love, right? And if we're yes. doing what we love, when we don't have to look at it as work and it can be your relaxation as much as your stimulation. Uh, Sp um, uh, Sparkles Eco Shop, I think therapy is wonderful and it's been very th therapeutic for me over the years. Uh, Crinkly Cloth, very interesting. Need to retain your brain with, retrain your brain with new habits. It yeah. takes time. Do one thing at a time. Joe Jill, designer maker, says that you are stressed makes you feel even worse. Saying that you're stressed makes you feel even worse. I have positive post-it notes dotted around my studio and I say out loud positive thoughts, which switches my thoughts. Very um, good. Samantha Trinder, your education system sounds amazing, Holly. Do it. Oh, uh, Samantha, if, if, uh, if only, if Best only I could. Ever. Yeah. Green and gold creations, the power of positive thinking is incredibly real. Yeah. So tell me, before, when you talk about um, 
uh, your hypnotherapy book that's coming out. Now, this is somewhere, something I haven't explored, actually. It's about wellness and resilience, um, yeah. which I would assume are two of the most key things, are they, that we now need. They're in our, so if I think about small business and understanding your numbers and understanding how to engage people and telling your story, other essential toolkits is being resilient yep. and looking after your well-being. Tell me about yep. then hypnotherapy for people that haven't explored that. So um, hypnotherapy is um, I, something that's been around for hundreds of years, but also kind of sort of thousands of years. They used to practice a form of healing hypnosis in sleep temples in ancient Egypt and ancient Greece. But their hypnotherapy, as we understand it today, is a few hundred years old. Um, and it's um, hypnotherapy conducted in a state of hypnosis, hence the term. Um, hypnosis is an altered state of consciousness. It's a trance-like state. That's not as weird as it sounds. Naturally, daily, we are drifting in and out of altered states of consciousness anyway. Um, when you fall asleep, you are in an altered state of consciousness. As you wake up, you are in an altered state of consciousness. Daydreaming is an altered state of consciousness. Okay. Anything where you zone out is an altered state of consciousness. But anything where you zone in is also an altered state of consciousness. So if you're uh, doing sports or yoga and you just lose yourself in it, that's an altered state of consciousness. If you really love your job, you get your head down, you think you've been working for half an hour, but you actually, it's, it's lunchtime, you are in an altered state of consciousness. Okay. Your mind goes there with a practiced ease. But in terms of your mind, a very nice thing happens to it. There's two bits to the mind, the conscious and the unconscious. Not a 50-50 split. 10% is your conscious mind. It's like your short-term memory. Yeah. The conscious mind is the 90% below. It's responsible for everything else. It's truly who you are. But that bit, that database of you, is very susceptible to positive suggestion in hypnosis. So if you're in a, if a, with a therapist and he helps you drift into a natural state of trance and gives you suggestions based on whatever it is that you want, and the therapy bit can be anything. So in a trance, you can have therapy for anxiety, stress, depression, well-being, resilience, stopping smoking, weight control, pain control. Um, you can even kill warts with it. So the therapy, but it's all conducted in this trance because your mind, the unconscious, the 90%, the driver of you is very receptive to those suggestions. The two bits of your mind always communicate except in trance. The communication gets bypassed. Your, your conscious, the short-term yeah. memory, is always, always checking up. How do I respond to that? How do I normally deal with that? What do I think of that? Check, 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 check. That communication gets bypassed in hypnosis, which allows that suggestibility. But it just means that when you come out of hypnosis and the two minds start communicating again, there's new information in there. Well, how do I deal with that? Oh, more calmly. Okay. How do I respond to that? More calm. Okay. So it just accepts those new suggestions as your new mode of operation. Wow, what a powerful tool that is. Oh, yes. Um, and and the, I'm really, the reason I'm writing the book um, is, uh, number one, it's kind of being touted as the next big wellness trend, even though it's hundreds of years old. Um, it's being touted as the next big wellness trend. And the reason it's being touted as that is that everybody was so desperate during the pandemic to find stuff to help them that hypnotherapists all over the world were noticing an uptake, you know, do you work online? Do you work online? I can work online. Fine, hypnotize me. Jesus, do anything, do what it takes. Yeah. And so hypnotherapy suddenly popped up on everyone's agenda then. And the, I've noticed it in my practice and so have other hypnotherapists. When you go, okay, people go, I just want you to help me cope. And they go, okay, what do you want to help to cope with? And they go, everything. Because <laughs> that's where we are right now. Right. And so yeah. when I get asked, and because I do a lot of webinars and presenting, those are the two subjects I get asked to talk about the most. Can you do something on our well-being? Can you do something on enhancing well-being? And can you do something about building resilience? And that's where we are right now. And I just thought, OK, well, hypnotherapy is back on the map. Everyone wants something to enhance their well-being. Everyone wants yeah. something to increase their resilience. When, you, when your well-being is strong and your resilience is high, that's when you are able to cope with all the stuff life yeah. throws at you. And so, that is for us small businesses and those building their future. You know, that is yeah. the bedrock, isn't it? That we need to 
you know, build from. Tell me, how would you say, uh, so when we're, we're looking today and it was all about the fight and flight mode that we have been in and we want to mm. move, transition, transition over to flourish and fly um, with that, um, that resilience and well-being. I think we've spoken about the well-being part and I think that we've had some really great suggestions from the community. What builds resilience? Well, um, resilience is just our ability to bounce back from setback, okay. challenge and negative events. Some people have got it in buckets. Some people haven't and they need to be taught how to build it. Some people have it, but then uh, something happens and then something else happens and then something else happens and, so, and you just go, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I help people who say they can't do this anymore, do this again. Um, and, you know, so I, people used to say, you know, their life is like one thing after another. Yes. And now often not, people are going, no, 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 it's not one thing after another. It's everything all the time, all at once. Right. And so we're all, before we get that opportunity to bounce back, the next thing has landed. And the next thing, well, we yes. can only do so much before this little voice in the back of our head goes, are you kidding me? Yeah. Enough. Well, I just, that's the voice that I need to help become more resilient. Um, enhancing your well-being will increase your resilience. Yeah. Um, sleeping well will increase your resilience. Eating healthily will increase your resilience. Exercising will increase your resilience. Um, and for all you smooth business out owners out there that don't know when to stop, stopping increases your resilience. Um, People who take regular breaks, who start work on time, leave work on time, take regular breaks, including a full hour for lunch, are healthier, happier, calmer, more productive, less prone to making mistakes and more resilient. Mm. So if you want a flourishing business, your self-care is essential to that flourishing business because if you fall apart, it falls apart. Yeah, that's the thing. And we don't, we, when we're in our modes, we don't think like that. Because, no. we're doing, because you know it is all about pushing 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 and by the way i would say there is moments in time where you don't have a choice you've got to yes. hard and there is moments in time where those extra hours they do count and they do push you forward but ultimately we're looking from a balcony point of view if you looked across everything you've got a healthy way of understanding the scaffolding that we need um yeah. slinger me bobs i've just been biking to work which has made such a difference to my mental health. Yes. Um, crinkly cloth, my sister does hypnotherapy on me. It's brilliant. Yeah. My, uh, the Thoughtful Potter, I had hypnotherapy for flying as my anxiety had got so bad, I just couldn't get on a plane. After hypnotherapy, I was able to fly calmly and anxiety free. It's been life changing. I mean, yeah. that is, that's, that is something, isn't it? That that's an actual physical thing that she couldn't do, and she could after hypnotherapy. And um, Joe Jill, designer maker, says thank you for such wise words. Um, oh, you're your, this has been really, really fantastic. And for anyone that wants to follow you, what's your handle? Uh, on Instagram, it's headologist. Headologist. Wait. Yes. And, and just. As a taster, because I want to buy this book a lot now, um, tell me the four things um, that um, fuck you up. Um, can, you, can you tell me what those four things are? Absolutely. So when I was talking about that date, yes. uh, it's the four thoughts. Thought number one, that date must go well. As you said, it's that, that there's no other option there. No, you're right. That's, well, that's how unhealthy that thought is. It's so dictatorial. It's demanding one thing and one thing only. That's yep. why it's unhealthy. The next one is that um, idea of catastrophizing. So if it doesn't go well, it will be awful. It will be the end of yes. the world. We, a lot of people are catastrophizing these days because of all the catastrophes they've been through. But that's yes. an unhealthy thought. And the next one, I'm, I call it the I can't cope. So it's called low frustration tolerance. I can't stand this. I can't cope with this anymore. I can't tolerate this. Yeah. It's an unhealthy rating of your resilience, basically. Yeah. And the final one is known as the put down. So you can put yourself down. I'm an idiot. I'm a failure. You can put other people down. You're an idiot. You're a failure. But you can even put things down. You can say, my business is completely useless. It's like a global negative put down of the self or of others or of things. And those four beliefs 
fire off in different combinations in the face of different problems and challenges, but yeah. they're all unhealthy. Each one of them has a healthier equivalent. We, the first one is that flexible preference. Yes, I would like that day to go well. I just accept it doesn't have to. Yeah. Then there's a, a anti-catastrophizing or anti awfulizing Okay, if it doesn't, I won't like it, but it isn't the end of the world. And yeah. then we've got high frustration tolerance or resilience. Okay, if it doesn't, it'll be difficult, but I'll cope. I'll get through it. Always do. And then we have what we call unconditional self or other acceptance. I'm not an idiot. I'm a worthwhile, fallible human being. They're not idiots. They're worthwhile, fallible human yes. beings. My business isn't a write-off. It's got good bits and bi uh, bad bits in it. Bits I'm proud of, bits I regret. That's life. So it's a much more rational rating of the self of others of, of things. So there's four. REBT therapists look for those four unhealthy thoughts. The must, the awful, the can't stand it, and the put down in the face of any challenge or difficulty and help whatever ones are appearing, we help that person adopt the healthier equivalents because that's how you increase well-being, enhance resilience, all of it. Brilliant. Gosh, absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much, Daniel, for being on. Thank you for You're my fast breathing in the face of my <laughs> internet issues. Um, I didn't stage that. That was genuinely what happened. Yeah, <laughs> and I know. I know you're going to get lots of followers and people reaching out, but thank you, Daniel, Lovely. for all your help. Thank you, and thank you for having me. It's been Take great. Take care. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.